Jesus. Nope, it's Gary. The movie begins with Athene and her friends creating a project called The Hunt, in which there are two groups of participants, hunters and victims. A woman sits in her office and chats about the upcoming hunt. One day, during a flight, stewardess asks a passenger if he wants caviar, but the passenger refuses. He smirks and asks for a glass of champagne. The stewardess leaves to pour the passenger a drink when suddenly a man appears in the cabin, scaring her and everyone else. The man who asked for champagne says that one of the passengers woke up early. At this point, another man takes off his sleep mask, takes the hulking man by the shoulders and says he can help him because he is a doctor. He asks the stranger to lie down on the prepared towels and suddenly stabs him with his pen. He woke up. And we can't have you talking about this. The man remains alive, but Athene enters the plane and hits the man in the eye with the heel of her shoe. At this time, another passenger mentions that the hunt hasn't even begun yet. Athene, clearing her shoes, says there is no room for sentimentality in war. An elderly gentleman drags a still-living stranger into another compartment of the plane, where a woman lies unconscious. Later, this blonde wakes up on a wood glade with a gadge in her mouth. She gets up and sees a strange woman on the other side of the river, making a compass. The stranger notices the woman for a second, but then walks away. After that, some man passes by which the blonde decides to follow. Eventually, she comes to an open field where a huge box is standing. The woman also sees other people who happen to be here and head toward the box. One of the participants says that they shouldn't open the box as it might be a trap, but another stranger opens the object anyway, while the others hide. Everyone is surprised to see the pig coming out of the open box. Inside the box also turns out to be a weapon for the participants in the event. The blonde finds the keys and removes the gag, also helping another participant remove it. I can't use that. Can you do this? Yeah. No one realizes what is happening when suddenly someone starts shooting. Everyone hides while one of the participants stops and thinks she has dodged a bullet, but it is too soon to rejoice. Another bullet hits the target after all. One of the participants starts shooting at the place where the shooting started, but he is also killed. Everyone else hides. One of the participants decides to run out into the field and suddenly falls into a ditch. She's being pierced through by an iron stake. Okay, one, uh. two. A man tries to help but steps on a mine, which immediately explodes. Eventually, some of the participants manage to get to the fence. The man who opened the box also manages to escape. They climb over the fence but one fails to get out. He is pierced by an arrow. Three of the remaining participants run into a gas station. They encounter the owners inside, an elderly couple who think they are about to be robbed. But one of the participants explains that they don't want their money, they just need to know where they are. The couple says they are in Arkansas. The man asks for the phone to call the police. Meanwhile, one of the participants eats candy found in the store and feels as bad as if she has been poisoned. Suddenly, the couple puts on protective masks. The participant is about to shoot the couple, but the older man does it first. The last participant also comes to an end. The elderly woman turns on the exhaust fan to get rid of the smoke. The couple then clean up the crime scene and drag the bodies to another room. The woman notices an engagement ring on one of the men, which makes her feel uncomfortable. But her husband says that it doesn't matter anymore because this man was definitely a bad man. The couple goes on to argue as they are suddenly contacted on the radio. The spouses report they have managed to swat all the participants, but they are told on the radio that there is another participant headed their way, so they must be ready. Honey, that's poison! You rigged the soda? No. There are 43 grams of sugar in that bottle. A participant named Crystal walks into a gas station, where she is greeted very warmly by the same couple. The woman buys a pack of cigarettes and asks where she is, but the older lady asks a strange question if she will take the change. Crystal notices something wrong and attacks them, taking the gun that was under the cash register and kills first the man and then his wife. Cigarettes in Arkansas only cost six bucks. You f***ed up, bitch! Crystal checks the gas station and finds the hidden bodies of the other participants. The woman also takes the ammunition and necessary items and then leaves the gas station. Crystal sees a car parked nearby and decides to check it out. First, she notices that the license plates on the car are fake. Then the woman sees an almost transparent string that connects the door to the bomb. 
Suddenly, she hears someone talking on the radio and hides in the bushes. Crystal is put on the wanted list as no one can contact the couple from the gas station. A drone sent by the organizers arrives and starts inspecting the territory. Suddenly, some man breaks the drone, shooting at it. The participant goes to the car, but Crystal stops him, saying that the car is booby-trapped. Crystal says that the man acted foolishly because by destroying the drone, he directly reported their whereabouts. Crystal and the stranger head toward the railroad tracks she noticed earlier. On the way, the man makes his assumptions about why they are here. He says he saw an article about a liberal elite group that kidnaps people to hunt them, but Crystal doesn't really believe it. Suddenly, they hear a train approaching and jumping as it passes and see immigrants hiding. The man thinks that they are all fake people, but none of the immigrants speak English. Once again, Crystal doubts the man's assumptions. The train suddenly stops and the military police begin to inspect it. The participants and immigrants surrender to the officers who frisk them. The man tries to explain to the policemen that they are fugitive Americans, but the policemen don't understand him because they simply don't speak English and walk away. Meanwhile, one of the immigrants begins to speak fluent English to the man. He tells them that he is the only actor and asks the man to calm down, but instead, the beaded man attacks him and puts a grenade in his pants. After a while, Crystal is brought in for questioning. The officer asks the woman for her documents, but Crystal begins to ask the police where she is. Without an answer, she starts voicing her own versions and eventually guesses that she is in Croatia. Crystal asks them to call the American Embassy, but instead, the police bring in another participant named Don. Sometime later, they both head to the open kitchen to eat. Don shares the same theories as the previous man. Suddenly, a representative of the American Embassy appears and picks them up in a car. On the way, Don recounts everything that happened. The embassy representative is shocked and says he will contact the police to find the people who were following them. Crystal notices that something is wrong with this representative, so she opens the door and pushes him out onto the road. She then gets behind the wheel and runs the man over. After frisking him, she finds a gun in his jacket. Don is startled by what is happening and yells at Crystal, but then they look in the car trunk and find the body of another participant. Jesus. Nope, that's Gary. They'd also find a map in the car. Don believes they are the only ones who survived this hunt and wants to use the car to drive away. But Crystal refuses, saying that with the map they can find the people who hunted them and get revenge. Meanwhile, a group of hunters sit in a bunker and discuss what is politically correct and what's not. One of the hunters is a soldier. He asks the others to be quiet, but they only laugh at him. Suddenly, Athene's voice from the radio orders them all to be quiet. One of the hunters comes out of the bunker into the woods to relieve himself, and at that moment, Don appears with a pig in his arms and distracts him, helping Crystal eliminate the hunter. The comrades hear a strange noise outside the bunker, and the soldier begins instructing the others on what to do. All the men are very frightened. Don launches a piggy into their bunker and everyone immediately starts shooting at it. Crystal kills one of the men and begins shooting at the others. The participant disables a soldier and then strikes a woman. Crystal fights one of the men for a rifle, but he manages to get ammunition. However, Crystal finds another bullet and shoots the enemy. Then she kills the last hunter who manages to get out of the bunker. Crystal thinks she has managed to deal with everyone, but is suddenly attacked by a soldier. She rips a water pipe out of the ceiling and badly hits the soldier, but doesn't kill him. One woman survives and calls Crystal names. The participant is about to shoot her, but then Don shows up. Crystal asks him to question the woman about why they are here. She answers rather stupidly, and Crystal points a gun at her, but Don tries to stop her by saying that she's a woman. Crystal then asks the Huntress if she deserves mercy just because she is a woman. Huntress answers in the negative and Crystal pulls the trigger. Don is frightened when Athene's voice suddenly comes over the radio, asking if he has caught the crystal. Upon hearing this, the main character points a gun at Don, suspecting him of being one of the hunters. Don tries to prove that he is not, but Crystal gets rid of him anyway. Then she tells Athene that Don is already dead. The lady approaches the soldier, asking where Athene is, and says she will not surrender, after which she begins to put pressure on the soldier's wound. Unable to endure the pain, he tells her the location of Athene, and in the end Crystal finishes him off.
A year ago, as chief executive officer, Athene meets with the owner of the company and discusses the subject of hunting. Athene says it's all just a joke, but the owner makes it clear that there are those who take the hunt seriously. The man talks about how this situation could be very damaging to their company's reputation and Athene should step down from her position. She then angrily asks who the people who accuse her are. After a while, a group of people, along with Athene, choose the participants in the hunt. When Crystal's photo appears on the screen, Athene decides that she will be her main enemy. After a while, Crystal arrives at the gate of the luxurious house. Athene tells her on the intercom to leave the gun where she stands, or the bomb will be activated. Crystal leaves the gun and enters the manor. As she enters the house, Crystal hears classical music and notices photos of all the participants in the hunt hanging on the wall. Athene is waiting for her main enemy in the kitchen, preparing dinner. She asks if Crystal killed Don, but doesn't say if he was one of the hunters. They begin to talk about Athene's reasons for organizing this hunt, which makes Our Lady laugh at her because the reasons were very silly. Crystal informs Athene that they have made a mistake. She is not who they think she is. It turns out that the woman who published the conspiracy theory against Athene has the same last name and first name as Crystal. After the truth is revealed, Crystal grabs a knife and begins to pursue Athene. The women fight fiercely. Crystal throws everything at her rival, including an expensive collector's champagne, but Athene manages to catch it without breaking it. Moments later, Athene flies over the fireplace from the kick. She pulls a double-barreled shotgun out of her bag and follows Crystal up the stairs. They continue their bout when suddenly Crystal throws her rival down the stairs and goes down herself. Athene takes a vegetable slicing knife and strikes, stabbing her opponent, but Crystal pulls Athene toward her and the protruding blade enters her body. The huntress eventually dies realizing that she hunted the wrong person. Later, Crystal bandages the wound, puts on the huntress dress and heads for Athene's private jet, bringing her gun and collectible champagne. On the plane, Crystal tells the pilot and stewardess that she killed their boss and orders them to take her home. Sitting in her seat, Crystal offers the stewardess to taste the caviar and tells her how damn good this collector's champagne is. It's great. Subscribe for more movie recaps videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out.